Xbox, go to Kara's stuff. Xbox, go to my stuff. We've just taken delivery of the Xbox One uh, console. Yeah. And basically, we're going to sit here and shout at it for an hour. Xbox, store. Xbox, listen to me, Xbox. The reason why we're having a problem is because we're in a bar and there's a lot of background noise, isn't there? So You're you know, such an alcoholic, Keith, <laughs> trying to do everything in a bar all the time. <laughs> Xbox, go to my stuff, you bastard. <laughs> so this is the Xbox One interface, which yeah. is massively simplified from the old Xbox Live interface, which was a series of scrolling screens that seemed to go on for your entire life. Yes. Uh, on this, there are only three screens. The main one is the home screen, and this has got all the stuff you'll need. On the left-hand side, it's the pins section, so anything that you like using. At like the moment, I've just got Skype and the TV and Xbox video, but anything like your favorite games, your favorite applications can just be there, so it's all yeah. kind of highly personalized. And on the right is the store, and this is uh, essentially where you're going to buy all your digital content. Uh, games, movies, TV, music, and applications. So that, that's it. I mean, it's obviously based sort of around the Windows 8 operating system, which is probably going to annoy some people, but I think it has a nice simplicity. It's nicely customizable. Yeah, it seems cleaner looking. It's got a kind of nice feel about it. Really, Xbox One, the whole idea about it is that it is this all-in-one entertainment solution through which you're going to be able to funnel your television, your cable, your set-top boxes, plus it also has multitude of video on-demand services. I'm not really that interested in integrating my whole entertainment experience into one box. That kind of doesn't appeal to me. But the one thing that does appeal to me is the fact that if you are running your Virgin or your Sky or whatever through Xbox, then it, it will give you all your game alerts. So if you're watching television through your Xbox and one of your friends decides they want to play games with you, then that will come up on the screen while you're watching telly. Whereas, you know, obviously that won't happen if you're not feeding all your telly through your Xbox. That's quite cool. Let's have a look at the uh, controller. So uh, the Xbox One controller, 40 changes apparently to the old one. Mm -hmm. I think the key things really are the uh, two analog sticks. They're much more sensitive. So there's less of a dead zone in the analog movement. So even if you move them just infinitesimally, it picks up the analog signal. Another thing they've done is move the X, Y, and A, B buttons closer together, and it has more slippery feel across them, doesn't it? I said it aids thumb transit. Thumb transit. <laughs> well done. The triggers, the big thing about the triggers is they have two new rumble motors, one in each trigger, which are used as a sort of gameplay component. Yeah, so Forza Motorsport 5, um, they use it to actually course correct, like uh, depending on how much it vibrates, it basically says, oh, you're going off course, you're going, you know, you're too hard into a corner. So you can actually like change your driving according to like how much it vibrates. Okay, um, so if you're like oversteering, a, yes. it will, yeah, it will tell you It's basically like a vibration. teaching, it's a teaching tool, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I think what they've done is uh, they've tried to make it all much more comfortable for long gaming sessions. And it just feels a lot less like I'm going to have a sort of Call of Duty claw at the end of three hours of, of gaming. Our favourite launch games, I would say, are probably uh, Forza, uh, Motorsports. Which looks awesome it's and they've got... It's really beautiful, Yeah, it's isn't it? pretty and I really like driving games, um, so it, it's, it's going to be pleasant to play, I think. They've got this thing called Drivatars, which um, I think is a really funny concept. Essentially, like, it can read your friend's playing style and their driving style, then they're just in the cloud so that they can download, like, their player, your friend's, like, personality. So into cars. So the game records the way that you play, your, the, yeah. your tactics in Forza and how you play, and then it produces a kind of online AI version of you, which, yeah. so that you can call up the driver tar version of me <laughs> and pretend you're playing against me. Lots of what Microsoft's saying about this is you're always going to be online, you're always connected to the cloud. It's going to change gaming because it will allow like enormous persistent worlds, but also allow these persistent AIs representing us to live online even when we're not there. 
Rise is um, interesting in terms of, uh, it's basically about ancient Rome, so they've done a lot of work on like sort of historical stuff. You are a Roman soldier, aren't you? Yeah, it's basically Batman style combat in a sort of Roman uh, skin. Um, it's very beautiful and immersive, but it's disappointing in terms of the combat sort of quickly graduates into quick time events mm -hmm. where, you know, you trigger something and then you stab someone in the neck in a different way each time. Sue Tycoon. This is good. This is by Frontier Developments, who did a lot of the really good early Kinect games on Xbox 360. Well, the ones that actually worked, like Kinectimals. <laughs> and now, uh, and now they're back with Zoo Tycoon, which is like a zoo simulation, isn't it? Running a zoo. Yes. It does look visually. It looks ra rather nice, even though this probably isn't going to be the title that people come to for you know, the killer visual app for Xbox. But, but I think that it really has longevity, this type of game. Like, you know, people will play this for years. Like, people still play The Sims. It works with Kinect, so you can actually go up to the animals and make faces at them, and yes. the monkeys make the same faces back. Yeah, you can wink at a monkey, and then the monkey will wink back. Kinect, obviously, has, is massively improved since the original Kinect. Um, it's high definition, it can track up to six people at once, mm -hmm. and it recognises you as soon as you walk into a room. You walk in the room and it recognises your face and it's like, oh hi Cara, would you like to play a game? And I'm like, no, go away, stop <laughs> so Leave me alone, me. <laughs> leave me alone, Connect. I think one of the big things about Connect is that, you know, lots of people complain about the fact that you've got to get it with the system and that's why the system is more expensive than the PlayStation 4. But the good part of that is that more developers will probably integrate it and they'll probably integrate it in more subtle ways so they don't have to base a whole game around connect but they can use certain facets of it like a shoot 'em up could use connect um, to track head movement so you say if you're playing like battlefield or mm -hmm. Call of duty you could just go like that and it yeah. will know that you're trying to look around the corner and it's very very detailed that like you can detect um fingers from few meters away yeah yeah so whereas before the old connect could only literally would get your body and two lumpy arms. Now it can sense your fingers and it can sense turning of hands. Yeah. So there's a lot more high definition uh, movement. And also all of your um, user interface uh, preferences, they're all stored on the cloud. So like say if I came to your house, walked in your front door and I said, Keith, what the hell are you doing in Kara's house? Please get out of Kara's yeah. house. <laughs> but if it did that and it sat down, it, it would recognize me and it instantly my preferences would be available. Xbox, show my stuff. It's another amazing thing about it is that it can pick up fluctuations in skin tone and colour and relate those then to your pulse. So it knows if your if your face is discoloured, it knows your heart rate is increased. Yeah. Which is super weird but interesting. I mean it's interesting. It just it just made me think about the privacy issues a little bit more because that is quite a lot of detail mm. about you personally that it would have. I mean you could do a lot of things in front of this machine that it would it would know a lot about you. Yeah. Facebook has been the Trojan horse in terms of privacy. Yes. In that the, the like, things that you will tell Facebook without thinking about it and maybe the things that you will tell Xbox it's One. A, it's a, like a kind of creep, isn't it? Like a feature creep. It's like every time they'll put something different in and it's it's got a different hidden hidden setting in order to turn it off. So I, I, part of me is kind of like, mm, maybe this is going to happen. I'm, but I am the other side. I'm totally unparanoid. I say, bring it on. You can penetrate the rest of my life, Xbox or PlayStation 4. The key says, penetrate my <laughs> life, Xbox. And on that bombshell, thank you, Carl <laughs> Ellison, once again. Ha, 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 ha.